I'm Sky Crystal, I'm culturally confused and creatively liberated and today I'm going to give you a tour of my mini greenhouse. It's an Ikea cabinet that I got on Facebook Marketplace for £40 and I'm so happy with it and I've finally got it all ready and it's about time to take a tour. So let's get into it shall we? Okay so on the top shelf I've got propagations growing and um, these are probably going to be plant swaps and various other different things like that. Um, they're not going to stay in my collection, but some of them might, but for the most part I'm just growing them to either sell them or swap them. And there's a lot of different plants in here and I'm a little bit intimidated by getting through it, but it should be, it should be good. I have some plants in here that I don't know if are actually surviving or thriving, but yeah. And then on the bottom shelf I've got my personal collection of plants and a few different cuttings that I'm kind of experimenting with to see what they do in regards to the growth phase. I've got a few wet stick cuttings that I'm mostly experimenting with and they are of Monstera obliques. But yeah, I'll start with the top shelf and then work my way through it and then work all the way to the bottom. So, first up I'm propagating Monstera adansonii narrow form. These are one of my favourite plants and they are super easy to grow. I have had some really good success rates in water propagation. They're finally rooting as well, which I popped these in less than a month ago and they're rooting already. So I would highly recommend using clay balls for propagation. I'm going to take everything out and then put it all back in. And then I've got a Pillier, no, a Peperomia, um, I'm not sure which variety this one is, but um, it's really cute and I think it should have different colouring, but I'm not sure, so we'll put that one to the side for the moment. And then I've got a cutting, here's a cutting of a Philodendron Royal Queen and it's pushing out some new growth. I recently propagated this and it's in some perlite as well as clay balls. This had some roots on it, so I'm not sure how this one's growing so far, but I'm just going to leave it in there for a while and then swap it. In here I've got some Hartley Philodendron or Philodendron Scandens cuttings as well. These I am propagating to make my plant look fuller. Um, it's going to take a while. The plant in question that I'm trying to make fuller is um, I moved it from its original spot and I regret doing it because it died out a little bit and it didn't enjoy that space. So I've moved it back to its original space which is just above here and it's growing much better now. It's pushed out some new growth points, so I'm really happy about that. Here is my avocado tree that I think is pushing out some new growth here. I'm experimenting with it by bonsaiing it to see if I can bonsai it and um, just, yeah, that's basically what's going on here. It's still growing, so I think I'm just gonna keep it in the greenhouse and see how it grows. Then I've got, then I've got a Monstera Siltipicana cutting that I am rooting in clay balls as well. This is the last plant that I have of my Monstera Siltipicana, which was looking a lot more flush, but then I overwatered it and killed the rest of the plants. Tried to save them by propagating them, but it was too late for that. And this is what I've got left. So I'm gonna grow this one up a moss pole once it's a little bit more established. You can see the roots in there, but when it's a little bit more established, that's when I'll pot it up and that'll probably be in the summer. So hopefully the leaves will get bigger and yeah, have some fenestrations going on there. Then I've got some wet stick cuttings of a Monstera Escalito that pushed out a runner. And this is the runner that I've chopped up to see if it will propagate. I did this recently and I haven't seen much growth from it but I'm really hoping that I do see some growth from it over the summer and we'll see what, what happens there because the Monstera Escalito is literally one of my favorite plants and I am so excited for it to grow taller but it's just it pushed out a runner because of the lighting conditions I believe but it, the mother plant is looking much better still looking great hopefully she'll push out some new growth and and it will be a leaf this time because it's under a grow light and yeah, that's my Monstera Escalito cutting. Then I've got a Monstera, a, a Sebi Blue Potha cutting from my friend Terry. And this one's doing great with the roots growing. The roots are growing. And this one I'm going to grow up a moss pole as well. I've taken another cutting from my other plant. And, and they're basically going to be growing up a moss pole. And that's what I'm going to do so I can promote larger leaf growth and hopefully have some fenestrations come through. Then I've got another cutting of a Philodendron Royal Queen here. 
her leaf's a little bit stuck so I'm gonna have to try and help her with that but this one's doing really good. This plant grows really well for me so I'm kind of obsessed with it and I really love this plant, the colouring of it. The mother plant grows there and I'm gonna repot it again in the summer with some new fresh soil from Soil Ninja but until then it's had a temporary repot and I put it up an, a larger trellis that I made and it's doing really well. It's pushed out three new leaves since being in my care and I'm really happy about it so and then I've got a few Tupperwares with wet stick cuttings in some of them are pushing out growth and this one is the philodendron micans so you can see the wet stick cuttings in there there's not much growth at the moment but it's, some of them are rooting and I'm so excited about it because I love philodendrons and monsteras and philodendron micans is one of my favorite plants and then I've got another Tupperware here with a few different wet stick cuttings, some of which I don't know what they are and they're gonna get messy, but there's a few different rare plants in here from a Monstera adansonii variegata to a Monstera oblique here. Some wet stick cuttings of various different philodendrons and yeah, I'm hoping they all take and grow really well in this little spot and they seem to be doing well. So I highly recommend this method if you've got wet stick cuttings or um, natural light works too I used to propagate these propagate loads of plants in a south facing window using this method of Tupperwares and sphagnum moss and soil so get experimenting it's really fun in here I've got another wet stick cutting two wet stick cuttings of Monstera adansonii mint variegata and then a couple of Hoya cuttings some other unknown plant I don't know what some of these are, so they are surprises for all of us. Then in here, I've got more mint variegata monstera cuttings and a couple of wet stick cuttings of a monstera obliqua the last time it sent out a runner. So I cut that up and uh, it's in here, so hopefully they should grow. But yeah, these are doing really well. They just need to be rooting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bigger Tupperware and pop them in that eventually. But until then, I'm just going to use the little ones. Over here I have a pregnant onion, which is one of my newest plants, and I got it in a plant swap from my friend Jules, and um, ooh, ooh, and it's a weird little thing. It looks like a gooseberry. I don't want to lift it too much, but and then it just pushes it, this out. But I've found out that it originates from South Africa, which apparently a lot of weird plants do. Love that. I'm South African, so this is why it's like a key moment in my life knowing that these plants are weird and so am I so there we go pregnant onion I've just got a pot of soil really good soil so I don't want to get rid of it um <laughs> I don't have anywhere else to put it so I just keep it in here and then I've got Serapigia woodii variegata and Serapigia woodii cuttings growing in water and test tubes they're finely rooted but i just think there's probably an easier way to do this so i did do it in a different way and um they're rooting a lot easier and there's a lot less mess and tangling an oxalis triangularis that is not looking great i'm gonna have to put it in well it is looking great but it's not it's looking a little i repotted this yesterday and this is what happens when you repot an oxalis um it tends to die back and then bounce back after so keep watering it if you do that <laughs> yeah oxalis triangularis purpura this is the variegated form of the oxalis triangularis and um it's beautiful you can see the leaves there they're stunning variegation with a dark purple and a light purple sorry that's not in focus there we go and then we've got the philodendron golden dragon cutting growing in sphagnum moss clay balls and perlite and this is doing really well i haven't seen any root growth yet but it's still alive so that's always a plus and then i've got epipremnum variegata cutting i love this plant and i'm really hoping it grows properly in here and roots properly this is basically so i can grow this up a moss pole as well and so it will produce larger leaves and fenestrations like that but the new growth hasn't been that exciting it's just a tiny little leaf here so that's why I propped it and I'm also on a plant ban so I'm not allowed to buy any plants for the next like two three months of my life 
which is a long time so I'm going to be propagating a lot and probably doing more plant swaps. I have a Syngonium tri-leaf wonder cutting that I'm going to give to a friend. This plant is really easy to grow and super forgiving and is okay with like kind of underwatering it because it tells you when it needs water by just getting a little bit floppy. This one actually broke. Luna broke it and then it grew back and now it's pushed out a new leaf and it's still fine. So I'm so proud of this plant because I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna die. Um, but it didn't, so yay plant! Oh yay! I should spray this. In here I've got a Therapigia woodii variegata cutting and they have pushed out some new growth already and I'm so happy. So they've rooted and they're pushing out some new growth and this one will be for a plant swap as well. In here I've got a cutting of a mystery plant. This happens a lot. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I can't remember what it is, but it's still alive and I know it's a philodendron, so we'll see how this one grows. You can see it in sphagnum moss and perlite and clay walls. There we go. Then we've got a couple of marantas here. This is me saving my plant. This is what's left of it. Um, we've been through some stuff but yeah there's another maranta here cutting so i'm gonna make the other plant more bushy and i'm gonna bulk it out with some cuttings and then i've got a mystery cutting i'm assuming it's a philodendron this is a mystery cutting keeps growing i don't know what it is but it's really cute so i'm gonna keep it in my personal collection um i'm also gonna spray it we have some red arrow vines um syngoniums red arrow syngoniums growing in here to also um, basically make my plant look fuller, also for swap. And there's also Cebu Blue Pothos cutting in here, um, a couple of different cuttings in here to see how they root in the clay balls. They seem to be rooting already, so that's really good news. And then I've got some more Philodendron Royal Queen cuttings here. This leaf doesn't look great, but um, hopefully the wet stick cuttings will survive and thrive. They've rooted a little bit. You can see the root system there growing. Yay. And then I've got a Monstero Oblique cutting it growing in clay balls as well. This was one of the most recent ones taken. Um, so I am hoping it pushes out some new growth soon. And then last but not least, I've got some golden pothos cuttings growing and they, oh, everybody needs water. They are rooting really well and really quickly. So I'll be potting them up soon. Okay. And then onto the bottom shelf, which I keep at around 80% humidity for one specific plant, but the rest of them seem to be thriving in it. So I'm really happy with this setup that I've got going on. I do need to get another one of these because it's broken. So, but I know that the oil diffuser or the humidifier is on. It goes up to about 80% humidity, possibly higher. So I'm really happy with that, this little setup and I'll write a blog post about this soon. Add links into the blog post so you can see where I got everything and how much everything cost. Because um, if you are interested in getting one of these, I would definitely get one. Because it's made my plant game a lot stronger in the sense that I know that I've got the safety net of this setup to make sure that any plants that need extra TLC are 100% going to survive and thrive in here in this setup so I'm really happy with it um, and it's fun it's a lot of fun and yeah basically let's get into it on this one I've got a couple of ferns I don't know what they are but they are really beautiful they my mum gave me these ones they're really cute that I keep them very moist at all times because I am terrified of killing them <laughs> and then I've got a Blechnum fern when these two fronds have been pushed out and this one is pushing it out as well so I'm really happy that they these are happy I'm gonna trim these bits back at some point and then see how they grow and I'll repot them in the summer when it's time then I've got a tiny little peperomia I've got a tiny little peperomia that you can barely see just there that's happy kind of happy, kind of growing, kind of not. This used to be in a terrarium, but now it's growing in a pot in the mini greenhouse. And I'm hoping it survives. And I think it's the same as this one, which is a peperomia as well. And then my babies, which are pushing out new growth every single day. Monstera mint and Antonii. And there's four plants in here, 
five plants in here and they're all from my mother plant. This is the mother plant, but I chopped her up because I wanted to propagate her and here she is. I've got another one growing that's a lot longer over there and it seems to be thriving in both conditions. So I would recommend experimenting with these ones as well. I've got a cutting that I'm trying to save, Philodendron melanochrysum, that's pushed out a leaf and this is the original plant. It's pushed out some new growth. This is the new growth and I'm hoping that over the summer it pushes out even more growth and thrives in this condition because it seems to be happy in here so I'm not gonna take it out for a while. And then I've got a, this was grown by Tissue Culture and I bought it from plants.com and it's a Philodendron McDowell and it's it was so tiny when I got it, it was literally so tiny and I put it into a terrarium with sphagnum moss and it's grown to this point now and I had to repot it and I potted it up in Soil Ninja Philodendron and Monstera mix and it's pushing out some new growth so I'm really happy about that and then I've got a Philodendron varicosum that was also grown by Tissue Culture and it was also the same size, very small and put it into a terrarium with sphagnum moss and it's grown, it's tripled in size and I'm really excited for this because I have had quite bad luck with Philodendron varicosums um, and melanochrysums so I'm hoping that these ones finally pull through and give back to me what I need from it and that's just to th survive and thrive basically I'm not asking for much but what can I say I really want my plants to do well <laughs> but yeah then I got another philodendron varicosum that is a rescue mission and it's pushing out a new leaf and I'm so excited and this was the original one that I got and I had to chop it all the way back and here is the result. So I'm keeping it in here and I'm going to put it on a trellis at some point. Then I've got my other rescue, my Philodendron Golden Dragon. It's pushed out two new growth points since chopping it all the way back and because the reason I chopped it all the way back was because it was producing really small leaves and I basically wanted to promote better growth for it and propagate from it as well. So I had multiple chances to gr have them survive. So this is staying in the greenhouse now until it pushes out some new growth. These are all reasonably big plants once they've grown. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I want to get another mini greenhouse and put it over here next to the bed. And that's a project for the middle of the year around my birthday time. So I can save up some money and basically save up for the plants wish list that I have. Um, which is not as extensive as I, as, use, as it used to be. I'm just kind of like deciding what I want now and gonna go for it at some point in the future. But yeah, and then I've got a Syngonia Mojito cutting that my friend Terry gave to me. And I absolutely love this plant. It's pushing out its fourth leaf in my care and it's super happy. And I just keep it in the greenhouse and it grows with all of the other ones and it's just, a dream plant. Then I've got a Philodendron Mamii Silver Cloud which is I've got a couple of cuttings over there but with leaves on them but this is the one that I chopped all the way back because it lost its most recent leaf and it's pushing out two new growth points now so I'm hoping that to get some leaves out of this soon. Um, I love this plant it's really beautiful I got it for I got it on sale so you can kind of understand what it would probably look like at the time but um, it's a rescue plant and I want it to survive and thrive. So it's in the greenhouse and it gets some extra TLC whenever it needs it. And yeah, then I've got more Oxalis triangularis purpura. This is my most recent, second most recent propagation. This is my favorite version of the plant. I love the original plant, but the purpura, the variegated form is my absolute favorite and I was looking for it for years and then I finally found it and then I'm not giving up on this plant. It is literally one of the most wonderful plants you could ever own and it's super forgiving and I've made a video about it so check that out if you want to know a little bit more about the care guide to looking after Oxalis triangulara. And then we have my baby who had to be rerouted. Monstera Thai constellation and then I burnt it by um, putting it too close to a grow light there. I'm sorry Ty. I'm sorry Ty Constellation. And then I have a Monstera Frozen Freckles which is not looking as great as I'd like it to but I think that it's just acclimating to its new environment. I got this a little while ago and it's pushing out some new growth but it's looking a little bit sad. 
Um, I don't know if it's looking sad actually because I haven't seen this plant look sad but it seems to be growing so I suppose I'm doing something right and it has to stay at 80% humidity. This is the plant that needs 80% humidity. So um, I'm learning a lot about this plant as I go along and one day I'll propagate it and see how that goes but for the now for now I just wanted to push out a few new leaves preferably this size instead of these little tiny baby ones that it seems to be pushing out so I'm going to give it a little bit more time in and to get used to the environment and I need to remember to turn on the humidifier every single day because sometimes I forget and then I've got a Monstera Oblica, which I recently propagated and it hasn't pushed out any new growth yet, but hopefully it will soon. This one pushed out a runner. I love these. I'm going to get a tattoo of the leaf one day. I absolutely love this plant. It's super weird and it looks like an alien mask and I am living for it. It's beautiful and I love rare plants. I love them so much. Yeah, I've propagated from it quite a few times and I had some really good successes and you can see them here. But before that, here's a holly fern that my mom gave me and it seems to be doing really well in the mini greenhouse as well, all of these plants are. Then we've got a Monstera adansonii variegata, um, which is pushed out pretty much an all white leaf and is hope hopefully it's going to push out some more growth then i've got a mon another monstera mint Ad monstera adansonia mint variegata cutting and another monstera adansonia variegata that's pushing out a new leaf and it seems to be really happy so i'm hoping this one will be the one to stay in this greenhouse and i'll probably either sell or swap the other ones I'm not entirely sure. And then I've got my Philodendron Squamiferum, my baby Squamiferum, which is super cute and super fluffy and I love it and it's been in my care for a really long time now and it's so small, um, but I love it. And I can't wait to see it grow up and actually change throughout its seasons of growth. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I've got my baby, my Monstera Adansonii narrow form that's just pushed out its first fenestration. This cutting I've had since for a few years and it basically deteriorated when it wasn't in my care and this is me trying to bring it back to life and I love this plant. One day I'm gonna grow this one up a moss pole as well. Then I've got a Monstera Oblica with some weird, I don't know if that's lighting, but it's got a little bit of variegation on it, which is interesting. Hopefully this will push out some new growth soon. This is this newest leaf. I'm thinking of getting this leaf tattooed onto me. So I'm gonna chop it and then get it tattooed. Monstera Oblica wet stick cuttings growing in sphagnum moss. I think I'm going to change this up into lacquer, into um, clay balls because um, the leaves seem to be rotting. Uh, another Monstera Oblica cutting that just pushed out a runner and I am experimenting with this one to see if it actually grows roots and pushes out some new growth. And then we have a Monstera Peru cutting. I've got my Philodendron Pink Princess that I'm rerouting in Sphagnum Moss and Perlite and it's beautiful and I'm hoping it's pushed out some new growth but I'm hoping that it pushes this leaf out but I don't know if that's going to happen I think it might just I'm just leaving it to do its thing um, and then lastly we have a Philodendron White Wizard that's pushed out some new growth as well that I had to reroute I've um and then I've also got a Tillandsia this is the last plant. I have a tiny little Tillandsia baby that lives in the greenhouse. It's in a glass orb. Um, but yeah, basically this is one of the plants that my mom gave me and I'm hoping that it grows enough to flower for me. But we got to be patient, haven't we? So yeah, living in a north facing exposure in comparison to a south facing exposure, I have had to learn a lot and about how to care for plants in different environments. And I was so used to south facing that I just treated everything the same. But now I've got grow lights and I've got this humidifier and various other different things that I, I, I'll talk about, talk more about in later videos. But for now it's, yeah, it's just been interesting to see how different everything works and how, how they grow differently in different environments and how adaptable plants can be. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's been super interesting and I'll talk more about that in the next video. But for now, that's all of the plants in my mini greenhouse. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.